Okay, guys, I am really super excited, not just excited, but super excited to close out this playlist on a single cutaway arch top build. This is a kit guitar that came from Guitar Kit World a couple of weeks ago, believe it or not. You know what? I'm going to give you a little clip of what one of these things looks like. Let's break away to that right now. Show you what a kit looks like when we lift the lid off. And then we'll come back and I'll jabber on and on. Let's go look right now. Do, do, do. While they're looking, I'll think of some other things. I got a... Oh, camera's still on. Anyway. Go, go, get. Click out. Leave the breakout room. Click that button. Yeah. You're all modern. Okay, now this thing looks like this. So let me give you the skinny. That's not a word that is used to refer to me that much anymore, but let me give you the skinny on these kits. Um, I've got an old arch top over here, and um, some of these arch tops I run across are 60, 70, 80. This one's 90 some years old. It's the Archcraft Arch Top I did a playlist on. You know what? I'll give you a link to it right up there right about now. Anyway, um, if I can remember that long. No, I wasn't there when the guitar was made. But here's the issue with the old Arch Tops. They're pretty fragile to begin with. And then you put 60, 70, 80 years on them and then... You beef them up, you do whatever you're going to do, you put a bolt in the neck, and sometimes they just crater in any way. And that is really the reason why this one became what it is and where it's going to. Anyway, I don't want to get into all that, but trust me on that one. So, when you get one of these kits, you don't have to worry that the neck is going to cut loose or that you have to put a screw in it or anything like that. They come in, as you saw... The neck is bare. The hardware is all there. Whether you use the hardware or not, that's completely up to you. But I will tell you this, for what you get as far as the neck, how it fits to the body, and the body and the durability of the body, the kit is worth the money. Now, I will tell you, I see people using all kinds of dyes and stains and trying to make these look like identical to some brand name guitar and stuff well i will tell you this the people in the factories have that down to a science to finish and stuff so i particularly like doing my own thing now you'll remember that this one was finished with oak gall ink that i made myself um some people don't like the dull color i like it because this is supposed to be an old guitar that's beat up it's supposed to present that way but it's got good equipment on it it's durable and it plays well so let's go through this thing and i'll show you some of the finer points um again it was stained with oak gall ink once that's soaked in about three coats of it the stuff gets really really dark so when you put it on um again the playlist hover your mouse up there you'll see everything i did with this guitar but it gets real dark it's a dull black color. And then I put a couple coats of boiled linseed oil on it. It's still not shiny. It's a dull color. Um, but the wood is protected. It's sealed up. And it won't swell and shrink that much and all that. Besides, these are, these are not like Ken Parker style. You know who that is. You need to see the acoustic. Uh, uh, he did a talk about 
the progression of the arch top and acoustics of the arch top guitar. We're not doing eggshell guitars here um, that sound that great acoustically. Well, we'll find that out in a minute whether that's true or not. But anyway, um, the whole idea is to put a finish on this guitar that fits the theme. So again, oak gall ink with boiled linseed oil. I gave you a safety lesson on boiled linseed oil in the episode before this, again, it's in the playlist up there. Don't play around with boiled linseed oil rags, leaving them lay around. Anyway, Tammy signed it. She signs all of them. These are Grover Imperial tuners. We've got a grease zerk on here in case your plan gets rusty. The Paul Miro junk pile guitar sticker. You know, Tim Lohman did that sticker. I'm going to give you a link to him below. He does some great music. You want to know who he is, but... Running down the top up here. Oh, I almost forgot on the back here. This triangle has relic wood in it from Reuben Lacey's church. Where Sun House recorded records at Paramount Studios in Grafton, Wisconsin. And a piece of wood from where Alan Wilson died. And that's all in a previous episode, but... Reuben Lacey was a blues guitarist. Son House was pretending to be a preacher. He was cussing Reuben Lacey, ran Reuben Lacey off. Reuben Lacey ended up being the preacher in the end. And then um, Son House kind of forgot his music. He was rediscovered in the 60s by Dick Waterman and Alan Wilson of Canned Heat, the slide guitars, taught Son House how to play his own music again. So there's that triangle. Um, up here we have, this is a real script coin from Parchman Penitentiary. What a terrible place. I've talked about it before. They would literally pick you up off the street for vagrancy, put you in the prison, and then the warden would turn around and basically rent you out to his friends on a plantation to pick cotton and then release you when all the cotton was picked, leaving you penniless and out on the street. Terrible place. Don't ever forget what a terrible, terrible time people had as sharecroppers in the 1930s and 40s in Mississippi. This is a Marvel Mystery Oil can. This thing has a truss rod, bone nut. I didn't put matchbooks on the neck of this one. I think that's going to be okay. It's got an Eli Green hoodoo voodoo bead. Do you know who Eli Green is? He was the vocalist on Bulldog Blues with Fred McDowell. I'll give you a link to that up there. Speaking of Fred McDowell, there's two holes on here I didn't use. By the way, this is supposed to be a knockoff of a Gretsch 2160 or Country Gentleman Chet Atkins model. Uh, the body is kind of like that. It's not exactly the same size, but that's a Gretsch Falcon style headstock. So it kind of re reminds you of those rockabilly um, Gretsches, but... Uh, there's a couple holes here that we didn't use, and I filled those with wood that was collected from the Stuckies where Mississippi Fred McDowell, uh, where George Mitchell ran into Fred McDowell in 1967 on a trip. We talked about a book that's out about that. Um, what else is on here? Marvel Mystery Oil Can Surrounds, giving this kind of a trashy look. Diarman made a guitar. These pickups are from a Diarman guitar. Again, you can use the stuff in the kit. It's great. Um, but this is going to a commercial artist. So um, we hopped up the stuff. Um, I put a floating bridge with a tunematic configuration and a trapeze tailpiece. Everything's chromed. And then, of course, we got some license plates on here uh, beefing up where the input jack goes and also a Mississippi license plate that kind of goes with it. So this thing is highly individual to say the least. Now the big question, how does it sound? Does it play okay and does it sound okay? So we're going to take a little trip now. We're going to go to one of my standards that people are good enough to give my guitars a strum and see how they, how they do and they'll make some suggestions to me if things aren't exactly right, and I'll do some touch-up before this one goes in a box. By the way, I'm going to do an episode about packaging up 
guitars so they get to where they're going without being destroyed and there's going to be some comparison on packaging that you can use and also the guitars themselves and what they might need so that said let's get in the car and let's go visit somebody we know who's going to show you what this thing will do okay welcome to carpinteria california culture capsule world here he is the one and only master of the mean town blues frank goldwasser <laughs> about that I swear on two things number one I could rake the flower beds at Frank's house with this guitar before I hand it to him it still sound good and Frank can literally play a rock I swear I'm gonna get a rock I'm gonna put a neck on it and a pickup on it and I'm gonna show you someday Frank can play a rock so a lot of that what you heard of course is Frank's ability decades of playing the blues he can play anything you heard a little bit of chet atkins in there you heard some mean town blues i want to thank you frank for being such a good supporter of the channel frank is in europe a uh, part of the year in america others so if you have the opportunity to see frank whether he's in france or touring through denmark or norway or wherever he's at go see him over there and he's around here in california about part of the year so uh, support Frank give him uh, a check out below on his site now I'm gonna put a grease zerk on this, this the last thing I do Tammy signs everyone but I put a grease zerk on these just in case your plan gets rusty I'm gonna box this up again don't forget I'm gonna do an episode about boxing up and shipping guitars you're gonna want to see that and I'm gonna put this in a box and send it off to Ireland and you're gonna see Andy from the Bonneville is working this thing over and we're going to be excited to see that so watch for that I'd like to give shout outs again Frank you're the best guitar kit world thank you for a durable product that I can take and put my name on it and send it out and make sure it's going to be okay and of course my friends the Bonnevilles in Ireland you guys play some awesome trash blues music can't wait to hear it I'll see you guys soon. Don't forget to give me a like, give me a subscribe, and check out Guitar Kit World. You should send me an email. I may have a surprise for you if you're remotely interested in building one of these kits. Go ahead and do that. I'll see you soon, guys. <laughs> Thank you.